John Zarell is with the VIPs and other folks who are in a special section, but they're not as close as they used to be, John. That's right, Bernie. The safety considerations following the Challenger accident dictated that uh, they move this VIP site where some of NASA's special guests and dignitaries are from three and a half miles to the launch pad to about seven and a half miles to the launch pad. Safety, of course, a big concern. I think Admiral Richard Truly, the Associate Administrator for Space Flight, told me a couple of days and put it quite clearly that the United States doesn't print enough money to make space flight entirely safe. And because we're dealing with, mach with a machine and because problems can develop, the astronauts have been given a series of abort scenarios which will enable them to bring the shuttle back to Earth safely. The space shuttle is a machine and machines can fail. Because it is an imperfect system, NASA has built in several of what it calls abort scenarios. If the vehicle should, for example, lose one of its three main engines, suffer an electrical failure, cabin or fuel leak, the crew would have four options available. The first and most desirable is called an abort to orbit. I can't make the orbit I want, but I, I can still make orbit. This contingency would be used if one of the main engines went down after the first eight minutes of flight and the vehicle had enough velocity and power to make a 105 nautical mile orbit. A standard orbit is 160 miles. The second option is called abort once around. In this case, instead of going into orbit, the shuttle would circle the Earth once and come back to the United States, preferably the Lake Bed at Edwards Air Force Base, but possibly White Sands, New Mexico, or the Kennedy Space center. The third option is called a transatlantic landing. In this instance, the shuttle would fly across the Atlantic using up its fuel and then dumping its huge external tank before landing at one of four sites in Spain or North Africa. The final option is a worst case scenario called the return to launch site or RTLS abort. There are a lot of unknowns that the margins in some cases are very small. Uh, this is a backup against the wall. You know, I got my backup against the wall situation. I've got to do it. Here, the vehicle suffers a major failure within the first four minutes after liftoff. It flies out from the Cape, using up its solid rocket boosters and the fuel in its external tank. At a predetermined point, the vehicle does a powered pitch around. It will then be flying backwards away from the Cape until the engines overcome the outward velocity of the vehicle and it begins heading back to the launch site. As it heads to the landing strip, the nose is pitched down in order to dump the huge external tank. And when the tank came off, the air loads would be underneath here, and they'd push the tank back up into the orbiter. So it's real apparent that what I've got to do now is I've got to go from this attitude down to this attitude. This complicated maneuver takes about 22 minutes. Although computer data says it would work, no one knows for sure if the vehicle would survive the aerodynamic stress. John Zarella, CNN, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Bernie, they say that those abort scenarios that they practice, they practice them over and over again. And of course, the return to launch site, the most difficult is uh, practiced extensively by this astronaut crew. Uh, engineers tell us it works about 95% of the time in the shuttle simulators in Houston. The only times that it doesn't work is when so many problems are thrown at the astronauts that they just completely lose control, something that would probably not happen even in a worst-case scenario. This is John Zarella reporting live from the VIP site. I'll tell you, John, after the many hours of reading all of the uh, NASA booklets that I and the CNN staff have read, just watching that last piece explained so much, so very much about what they would do if and when. Well, just as you're watching around the world, watching what's happening here at Launchpad 39B, here in the state of Florida, just beyond the gates of this place, they tell us that an estimated one million people or more all the way from the Yukon are down here. And when we got out of bed at 4.30 this morning to leave at 5.30 to get here at 6, you should have seen the traffic jam. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands of cars. Well, when we come back, we'll check in with Houston, the Johnson Space Center, and get the latest update from those folks as your network of record continue its live coverage of the shuttle Discovery when it lifts off. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting Systems.
This is a CNN special report, America's Space Mission. At the Kennedy Space Center, CNN's Bernard Shaw. The latest we've learned here is that NASA is planning to restart the clock. It has that built-in hole, but they're going to restart it at 1121, 21 minutes past the hour. And that is the hole right now at T minus nine. There are some 5,000 members of the news media covering this launch from all quarters of the globe. For the last shuttle launch, Challenger, there were just about 500 journalists down here. And those who were not here learned a lesson that shuttle flights may have been proceeding on a regular schedule, but that they could not be considered routine. John Holloman joins us once again to take a look at what else we may have learned from a disaster, one that is still so very utterly fresh in our minds, one that in just about three, three months or so, will have been three years. Of course, we refer to the Challenger. Correspondent uh, John Holloman will be telling us about that in just a second. Let's listen in, though, to the voice of launch control. The briefing that he normally gives at the uh, T-minus 20-minute point, in which uh, he briefs the team on the way in which uh, holds may be called and on the various information that they need to know during the final part of the countdown. Uh, one of the things which he uh, mentioned was that the window will extend for this morning's lunch uh, from 11.30 a.m. Uh, to 1.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time this afternoon. The COLA, which uh, he referred to, is a, a collision avoidance uh, time uh, and we will not launch from 12.13 to 12.19 uh, to avoid any possibility of collision with uh, objects which might be in orbit at the, the present time. Uh, not only are we concerned with uh, any collision, uh, but also with coming too close to uh, any of the, the large orbiting objects, such as the Soviet space station Mir. Uh, yeah, we're approaching our upper limit on the uh, PPO2 sensors. I uh, wonder if we could ask the crew to uh, stop and uh, close the valve. Walk out. You just die, Sal? Cut out, Sal. Yeah, this is PBC. Uh, you were, uh, As we were saying, uh, we noted that. Um, there were about 500 journalists covering the launch of the shuttle Challenger. Today we have more than 4,000 journalists down here. And uh, certainly the news media have learned that you cannot take any launch of a shuttle orbiter as routine.